everybody. I'm Gloria Moraga. This is the Political Woman Podcast. Kamala Harris was never a border czar. Let's discuss the U.S. border with Mexico. Here's the theme sentence for this podcast video. Kamala Harris was never, ever a border czar. It's another lie. It's another made up label that Trump and the MAGAs are trying to pin on Kamala Harris. Let's just go into a little bit of background on border policy and immigration reform in the United States. The last president who attempted to solve our southern border problems was George W. Bush. And I think, I thought at the time, he's going to do it. But guess what happened? 9-11. 9-11 happened. And then the United States was in no position, there was no desire to have any kind of immigration reform at that time. Yeah, when Trump came in, he put a Band-Aid on the problem, and it was another PR stunt. He didn't solve it. In fact, he made it worse. In fact, he violated civil and human rights, and that was a dark, dark mark on our history of human rights. This is a quote from a great article called Zero Tolerance, the Trump Administration's Human Rights Violations Against Migrants on the Southern Border. And I'll have a link and let you know the source in a second. Quote, in 2017, the Trump administration imposed its policy of zero tolerance immigration enforcement on the southern border. The policy resulted in the forcible separation of families and the prolonged detention of children in harsh conditions without due process or adequate resources. There weren't the resources down there to handle these children, children that had been ripped out of the arms of their parents. The Trump administration, still quoting, unleashed these policies to deter people from migrating and seeking asylum, something that we pride ourselves in doing. Consistent with President Trump's, and this is a quote, racist campaign rhetoric. The article, this article, analyzes and critiques these policies based on international human rights laws. That's end quote. And the source is the Drexel Law Review, the Thomas R. Klein School of Law. And I'll have a link in the description. That's what they want to go back to. That's what is in Project 2025. And that is what, okay, forget Project 2025 if you're going to believe Trump, which you should not. That is what Trump has said himself that he's going to do on day one. They're already building camps. They plan to, anyone seeking asylum, we have a system in place that allows those people uh, to come in if they're seeking a political asylum. It's been our law. It's been the foundation of this country. They're going to do away with that and throw people in camps and have mass deportations. And it's wrong and it violates human, basic human rights. All right, let's get into the Republican border czar lie. In 2021, President Biden asked Vice President Kamala Harris to lead diplomatic efforts to stem the flow of migrants to the southern border. Did you hear it? Lead diplomatic efforts. During a meeting with immigration officials in March of 2021, President Biden announced that he had asked Vice President Harris to oversee diplomatic efforts to get three countries, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, to stem the flow of migrants to the southern border by enforcing restrictions on their prospective borders. Not on our borders, on Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras's borders. 
Okay, how do you even do that? <laughs> it's like, it's folly. How do you, you work with other governments to have them fix their border po problems? But she did. The vice president subsequently traveled to those countries and met with their leaders, and the goal was to try to address the root problems of migration in the region. Dog, dog. I think the pool guy's here because my pool is as green as, <laughs> I don't even want to tell you, the Wicked Witch of the West. All right. So she did travel to these countries and actually she did some good work. Um, here's the sound bite from the meeting because uh, when I was live on TikTok, uh, people were saying, oh no, there's, there's the meeting, the meeting where he made her czar. No, he didn't make her czar. If you listen closely, you will hear what he asked her to do. And um, and she did it. But she was never border czar, and I'll get more into that later. Here's the soundbite. Vice presidents agreed among the multiple other things that have happened in the meeting, and I appreciate it, uh, agreed to um, uh, lead our diplomatic effort and work with those nations to accept re the returnees and enhance migration enforcement at their borders, at their borders. We're already talking with Mexico about that. She's already done that. We're going to be dealing with a full team now that we have to be able to deal with the problem here at home, but also to deal with it now in terms of in country. He did not make her borders are. He asked her to work with these three countries, and she did. Now, I'm going to quote in the next section here heavily from a Los Angeles Times article. Why? Because it's comprehensive and it's good. It's, it's really a good article, and I'll include that link as well. So I'm quoting here now. Quote, Kamala Harris spent her political career supporting immigrants. As vice president, it got more complicated. And the quote continues, this is, goes into the body of the story. That was a headline. Speaking in Guatemala, Guatemala City on her first foreign trip as vice president, Kamala Harris issued a stern message to Central Americans. So she put on her prosecutor get tough hat. And she said, quote, I want to make, I want to be clear to folks in the region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border, she said. Do not come. Do not come. Totally against her makeup, you know, what she had worked for most of her career was to support uh, immigrants. Do not come. Do not come. And the article goes on, quote, her 2021 remarks were widely scorned by rights advocates as arrogant and out of touch with a complex mix of poverty, violence, and other factors that drives people to leave their countries. Later, as border crossings surged, Harris's words would be mocked by Republicans as evidence that the Biden administration had no plan when it came to halting migration. So she was placed in kind of a lose-lose situation. And the article goes on to say, and this is not me speaking, this is the LA Times. It was an unwinnable assignment that Harris never wanted. And while she claimed some accomplishments, including coaxing private companies to pledge billions of dollars to invest in Central America, she, on the other hand, was criticized as showing tepid interest in the issue and for only visiting Latin America twice. It was her first foreign trip going down to South America as vice president. Um, and then I'd written a lot. I pulled a lot of information about Kamala Harris's background and how she was a staunch supporter of migrant rights and the rights that are in place to protect migrants. Um, she said when she was uh, her first speech as senator in 2017, she said, quote, I know what a crime looks like, and I will tell you, an undocumented immigrant is not a criminal. The truth 
is the vast majority of immigrants in this country are hardworking people who deserve a path to citizenship. The president's immigration actions and Muslim ban will make America less safe. As a prosecutor, I can tell you, it is a serious mistake to conflate criminal justice policy with immigration policy, as if they are the same thing. They are not. I have personally prosecuted everything from low-level offenses to homicides. I know what a crime looks like. And I will tell you, an undocumented immigrant is not a criminal. But that's what these actions do. They suggest all immigrants are criminals and treat immigrants like criminals. And there's no question, those who commit crimes must face severe and serious and swift consequence and accountability. But the truth is, the vast majority of immigrants in this country are hardworking people who deserve a pathway to citizenship. That's Kamala Harris working on her own fighting for immigrant rights. And that's an end quote. So I will just go on to say, bottom line, Kamala Harris was never appointed border czar. She was tasked by President Biden. And what's a point here, Barack Obama gave Joe Biden the same assignment. And Joe Biden didn't do much better than his vice president, Kamala Harris. You can't go into other countries and tell them <laughs> to fix their border when we need to fix our own border. And, um, but she was never appointed border czar because here's why. Here's, here's the bottom line in all this. She wasn't tasked with going to the U.S.-Mexican border and dealing with problems there. She wasn't tasked with, she wasn't given uh, the mandate to work with Congress to draft immigrant reform legislation or migrant reform legislation or immigration reform policy. That wasn't the job. The job was go work with these three countries, and she did it. And it didn't make that much difference because of too many factors involved. But um, she did get some companies to, to help out in those countries. Um, the only way, the only way to get comprehensive immigration reform is to work through the United States Congress, to have the president or the administration work with the courts and work with the Congress to draft legislation to fix all of these problems because Congress holds the power of the purse. Congress is responsible for spending the money. And yeah, the president draws up a budget. Yeah, the president puts suggestions in. It's a book always called a budget blueprint. It's the president's budget. But the Congress, that's their job to spend the money. And you want to blame someone for our lack of immigration reform or lack of immigration policy? Blame Congress. George W. Bush, who really who was heavily supported by Hispanic coalitions, wanted to fix our immigration policy. And he couldn't do it because of 9-11 and for many other reasons. But he also blamed Congress for not helping him in this area. And they didn't. They didn't help him. And why didn't they? Politics. Politics always comes into this and it's always money. Politics and money. We had the groundwork for the beginning of immigration reform, which would have helped what's happening down there at the border right now. We had it this year. And the Congress and the Biden administration worked for two years to get this legislation drafted. And it was a good bill. It was a compromise bill. It wasn't something that liberals or ultra liberals, or it wasn't a bill that ultra conservatives, you know, loved, but it was a good start and a good compromise bill. It would have helped 
what's happening down there. And what's happening down there is there's not enough manpower, but more than anything, more than just the border patrol agents, which, you know, are overworked, but there has been some help, is the administration help down there. To have um, clerks and secretaries and legal aides down there helping manage the red tape and the paperwork. This is just a fact. It's just a freaking fact that you can't just grab people and throw them into a cage or a corral and not violate their human rights. They're coming here for help. It's what our country is a nation of immigrants. And violating human rights is not the fix, but it's what the Trump administration is, a second administration would head toward. Read Project 2025. Read, the president says that, President Trump says it all the time, says it all the time. And I have a habit of calling ex-presidents presidents because it was a training from when I was a political reporter because you afford them that courtesy, um, but he doesn't deserve the courtesy. That's why I always break my rule, but then sometimes forget because I'm angry or upset. We had the makings of a beginning of a good border policy and Trump derailed it. He derailed it so that he could use this issue as a political issue and he's doing it right now. Just look, look at what he does. Look what he says every day. I'm Gloria Moraga, political woman. This is podcast. Kabbalah Harris was never the border czar. She was tasked with working with three countries in Central America to try to fix their problems. And it was an impossible assignment, but she did give it a go. I'm Gloria Moraga, political woman. Please subscribe. Please follow me here on TikTok, on YouTube, on everywhere. Please subscribe and be safe.